I mean, another big story today um, uh, is the Rochdale grooming report. Um, it's just so depressing. This Maggie Oliver, this fantastic detective, trying to sort of get prosecutions of these uh, these grooming gangs and failing, and actually having to basically resign her job. Uh, it's become an amazing campaigner uh, for children now. But Greater Manchester Police um, issued an apology for their inadequate response. This is a report that was put together basically, uh, well, uh, six a six-year investigation by Andy Burnham, the Greater Manchester uh, Mayor, Labour Mayor, of course. Um, massive criticism of the police in Manchester, massive criticism of the, the council. Um, the Chief Constable said it had been a shocking, stark and shameful period. But they also identified, what a surprise, 96 men are still, they believe, a potential risk to children in the area. And bearing in mind, it wasn't just Rochdale, it was Rotherham and pretty much, you know, in Oxford and pretty much every town and city across the country where there was widespread issue with grooming gangs. The particular MO of these grooming gangs were they were largely Pakistani men. That's That, that was where they, they were Pakistani heritage, usually often men who, who come from Pakistan, you know, not being born here in Britain. Um, and the target, and the, and the two key things there, one was the view that the, the white working class girls were just easy fodder and were just cheap. Sl they're sluts, they thought they were sluts. They could, they could hand them round each other. You know, they you know, gang rape, drugging them, just treating them as if they were just nothing, animals. But also, no action was taken when this became identified, when parents of these girls, when social, when other people went to uh, the, the police, um, they basically treated the girls as if they were just underage prostitute. By the way, no such thing as underage prostitute. You're always a victim of abuse. You're mm. not, it's not legally possible for you to consent to sex, even for money. Um, girls turning up, you know, for their third abortion at the, at the, at the, uh, at the local NHS hospital, A&E unit, um, with, a, with a man in his 50s with them, clearly not a relative. Nothing done. And the general view was... <sighs> thing is, it'll stir up racial tensions because it's a load of white girls and a load of Asian appearance men. And it all looks a bit difficult and uncomfortable, so we'll just let it carry on. And it's still carrying on now. Mm. It's a harrowing account and a harrowing uh, report. And, you know, it goes to show that there are good people in this country. They're usually the little person. So whether you're a sub post uh, uh, master or mistress, yes. you're trying to challenge the system, trying to challenge the post office, whether you're taking on the police, whether you're taking on a local council, whether you're taking on uh, what is clearly uh, taking place on the streets of Rochdale and across the country of a particular group of people who are targeting young uh, women and girls, uh, using them, exploiting them for sex, as you've absolutely said, uh, rightly so, but not being able to uh, challenge the system through fear or, or because of you know racial tensions. That is totally the wrong way we should be looking at this. When there is any sign of any abuse, what Whatsoever. Yeah. People should have the ability, they should have the confidence to be able to stand up and say, that is wrong, and I'm calling it out for what it is. And the people that are doing this uh, awful, heinous acts and crimes, they need to be locked up. Yeah, and exactly. And, and in many cases, deported. A lot of these men, again, fighting deportation. They're not British, you know, they're not British born and bred. And, you know, I'm sorry, we, you know, even if you're a British citizen at this point, we don't want you. We don't want you if you're committing these crimes. Um, I still, I know it's still going on. A very good friend of mine who is a, a detective, she um, has to sort of, one of her jobs with the last few years was, befriending, getting to know the, the likely victims of grooming. A lot of these girls have come from very difficult homes. They're in care, they're you know, abused, neglected at home. And they're absolutely convinced that these men, and they are men, often two or three times their age, um, that they are their boyfriends. Mm -hmm. They give them drink and drugs and, 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 and gifts and things, and then share them around their friends. Mm -hmm. um, it's absolutely, these girls are absolutely convinced that, well, you know, this is the only kind of attention and love they've ever had. And trying to get information from the girls and verifying, like, do you have any, try to take photos of their cars. And what was, and what was the number plate of the car? And do you remember the name of the man who, who then gang raped you? You know, and, and trying to get the information, trying to get as much verification. And where were you? What, how, do you remember what number house you were at? And trying to get that information and, and, and then waiting five, 10 years for the girls to then be ready to bring charges against these men. They're having to watch, the police are watching it in real time and feeling unable to act. Something is going wrong in our country. Something is going wrong. Yeah, absolutely fundamental. And it goes back to, without sort of, you know, 
because that is absolutely also, you know, very, very right. But it's, it's, it's about taking back control. That is what people mm. voted for. And it wasn't just about Brexit. It's about taking back control of your communities. It's about taking back control of our identity. Yeah. It's not accepting, not just... It's antisocial behaviour. It's anti crime. Exactly. It's, it's, it's everything. It's, Wokeism. It's, just... it's not just about laws from the EU. It's about you yeah. know, this, this you know, idea of social media, this way in which you know, we need to all be sort of happy and get along. No, it's about standing yeah. up for ourselves. It's about being a proud nation. It's about calling things out where, for what they are, when things go wrong, and making sure that you can put those uh, wrongs to right. Um, but as a proud... Uh, and, and there's system. been quite a few reports about, like, sort of you know, rubbish, you know, and, and, um, and people being, you know, fined £1,000 for putting cardboard in someone's rubbish bin or, or, or using the wrong bags. I mean, certainly, oh, I, mean I, I could do three hours every day on the bin collections in my area. Drives everyone up the wall. Um, but, but then people feel like, well, I'm getting fined for this, or I'm getting fined because the, you, you know, the local main road is now 20 miles per hour, not 30, and you've done 22. Yes, OK, you bring the... But people, getting, people feel like that sort of... You know, largely law-abiding citizens trying to go about their daily lives, paying taxes, doing the right thing, that they are getting fined. They're getting sort of nabbed under the collar. Mm. Whereas the people who are disrupting society, who, who are causing crimes, you know, are, 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 no one's doing anything about them. There's that general feeling, isn't there? It is, and it's that sort of, you know, in terms of criminal justice on, it, the, on itself, you know, you're hearing about those people that are prosecuted, that are going through the court system, magistrates' courts, and that's yeah. clogging up the system, and that means that there isn't the time or the justice against those uh, criminal gangs, those uh, grooming yeah. gangs, and people that should actually be going through the court system. It takes yeah. years and years and years to get justice for those real victims. Yeah, indeed.